In this Regents Chemistry video, we're going to talk about solubility. So what we're talking about here is basically uh, the amount that we can possibly dissolve into something. So, so there's a limit here to how much solute we can dissolve into a certain solvent. So we have this example here. If you tried to take an entire bucket of salt and dissolve it into a small beaker of water, we can all kind of picture that that wouldn't work out, that there's too much salt there for that water to accommodate when it tries to dissolve uh, into the water. So this, this term is called solubility here. This is basically how much uh, of a certain solute we can dissolve into a certain solvent at given conditions. So basically the ability of a substance to dissolve into another, into the solvent. So how much solute can dissolve? Well, it depends kind of on some conditions like temperature and pressure, but if we keep temperature and pressure constant, uh, there's different substances that are going to have different solubility values. So um, if we look at like aluminum fluoride, it has a solubility of 0.67 grams per 100 grams of H2O. So obviously if we change the amount of solvent, that would change how much we could dissolve. If we take that same bucket of salt and try and dissolve it into the ocean, let's say, obviously there's a lot more water there to uh, accommodate all of that salt, so it's going to work out a lot better than uh, with the beaker example. So this, this always has to have some unit here for the solvent. In this case, how much solute can we dissolve at this given temperature and pressure into this amount of water, 100 grams in this case. So that's, a, that's again basically what solubility is telling us, is just how much can we dissolve into a certain amount of this solvent. Usually we're talking about water. So what we're talking about here kind of with solubility is saturation. So what saturation means is when, when a solution has, uh, has dissolved the maximum amount that it can dissolve. So, so that's when something is saturated. It, a solution is saturated when, when the solvent has taken as much solute as it can possibly take. If we add more solute past that point, it's not going to dissolve. So it won't dissolve, it'll just stay as a solid. Uh, if we took more salt into that water, the salt that didn't dissolve, which would be most of the bucket, would not dissolve. It would just stay as solid salt crystals like you would see in the bucket before you tried to dissolve it. So we can only dissolve a certain amount and past that point it doesn't dissolve anymore, it just stays as a solid. So that's, the, that's called the saturation point or where a solution is saturated. So an unsaturated solution means that we haven't reached that point yet that we, we have more room in that solvent to dissolve more solute into. So it contains less than the maximum possible amount. And if we add more solute, we can dissolve it up to that saturation point. So if it's an unsaturated solution, that means it can basically accommodate more solute. So there is this special case here called a supersaturated solution where if we take uh, some, some very special conditions, we can dissolve more than the theoretically possible amount of solute that we would think based on the solubility of the compound. So th basically you want to think supersaturated is if we have more than you would think we could have, more than the the data uh, based on this substance which would, su would suggest that we have. So we had that example of, of aluminum fluoride or yes of, of aluminum fluoride here and this is the solubility 0.67 grams. So if, if we somehow dissolve let's say one gram into 100 grams of water, uh, that would be a supersaturated solution. That's more than the theoretical solubility would dictate. So saturated solution has uh, the maximum amount possible, an unsaturated solution has less than the maximum amount possible, and a supersaturated solution is this special case where we have more than the maximum possible amount uh, dissolved. So what we, we I mentioned that we uh, that solubility is affected by temperature and pressure, right? So uh, for a solid, if we take something like salt, this would be affected by temperature. So generally, for most, uh, for most solutes and solvents, as the temperature increases, the solubility generally increases. So if we take water and we're trying to dissolve salt into it and we heat that water up, we're going to be able to dissolve more salt than we would into, let's say, cold water or something like that. So that's an important thing to know, that is that as we increase the temperature, the solubility increases. So there would be a relationship, it wouldn't be linear like this, but it would be some sort of upward trend. 
So for gases, it's a little different. We've talked about how not all solutions are liquids or solids, that, that we can actually have solutions with gases as well. So if we're trying to dissolve a gas into a liquid, uh, the temperature phenomenon is actually the opposite. So as the temperature increases, the solubility of the gas generally decreases. So why that is, is if we have this, this liquid down here, and some gas particles dissolved in it, and we heat them up, they're going to start moving faster, right? Because the kinetic energy tells us how fast the particles are moving. So if they're moving faster, they're going to be really excited. They're going to be able to kind of bust out of this liquid and be in the gas phase where they're going to be a lot more free to move around, and they're going to be a lot more uh, satisfied out there where they have more room to kind of fulfill their their speed desires, if you will. So uh, for temperature... Uh, the, the, the trend for gases is opposite as it is for liquids. So for pressure of gases though, this is where if we increase the pressure, the solubility of a gas is going to increase. So if we take this uh, picture down here, which is kind of representative of the pressure trend, if we take a container with some gas above it and some gas dissolved in the liquid and then we increase the pressure, so we kind of take this piston type thing and just move it down in here, forcing these particles together, we're going to increase the pressure there, just kind of like we talked about with the gas laws. So if we increase the pressure here, these gas particles are going to be really unhappy in here above this liquid. So it's actually more stable if they force themselves into the liquid, and they're a lot more stable there than they are in that high pressure above the liquid in the gas. So this, this is called Henry's Law here, and basically as we increase the pressure of a gas, we're going to increase the solubility because those gas particles are going to be uh, more, they're going to be happier in the liquid than they are uh, all pressurized in that, in that gas space above the liquid. So that's just a good thing to know, Henry's Law, that as we increase the pressure of a gas, the solubility increases with that change. All right, so the next thing here is solubility curves. So what these are are basically a representation of as we change the temperature, what happens to the solubility of a certain substance. So generally, you can kind of see that most of these lines trend upwards, right? We have a bunch of kind of upward sloping lines here. There are some, there are a few you can see that kind of go downwards, but kind of the majority of these lines all go upwards. So this kind of supports the idea that as temperature increases, generally solubility increases for a liquid. So what these lines represent is the saturation points for all these substances. So these, this, anything that's on this line would be saturated. So what that means is if we have like NH4Cl with this line, if we have let's say 80 degrees Celsius, then the saturated solution would have roughly about 66 or 67 grams of solute per 100 grams of water able to be dissolved. So this this line again represents saturation. If we have anything below this line, so this whole region down here, if we're looking at just NH4Cl, this whole region down here would represent unsaturated. So that would be an unsaturated solution down here because we've dissolved a certain amount that is less than the maximum possible amount. And then if somehow we had some special conditions up here, this would be super saturated. Because we have dissolved more than this theoretically possible uh, amount to dissolve in a certain substance. So to interpret these graphs, you want to see at a certain temperature, how much could I dissolve based on the substance. So this is just for NH4Cl. We could look at HCl, which would be this line or some other lines here. We've got all these different lines on here. This is actually kind of, I truncated this graph a little bit. It goes up, it continues, these lines continue up here. But uh, for the purposes of this, we'll just kind of look at the lower ones down here. So what we need to know is just that on the line, this represents saturation. Below the line represents unsaturated solutions, and above the line would represent a supersaturated solution. So uh, some of the questions we could we could have here are about basically just how uh, these graphs can be interpreted. So if we take this first one at 70 degrees Celsius, what mass of KClO3 can be dissolved in 100 grams of water? So this, this graph here is, is per 100 grams of water on the y-axis. So we're already, we're already in the right kind of terms here, so we just want to look. Okay, at 70 degrees Celsius, let's look at the KClO3 line, which is this one right here, right? So at 100 degrees Celsius, or at 70 degrees Celsius, excuse me, what amount of KClO3 could we dissolve? So we go over 70 degrees here, and we just kind of go up to the KClO3 line, and we got this here. So we kind of go across, and this would be 
aside from the crooked line here, this would be about 36 it looks like. So we would say 36 grams of KClO3 per 100 grams of water. So that would be our answer here. 36 grams of KCl3 would be possible to dissolve here. Um, if we had an amount that was higher than 36, that would be a super saturated solution. So we're really just talking about a saturated solution. Theoretically, how much could we dissolve in here? So next one here, what mass of NH4Cl must dissolve in 200 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution? So this one's a little tricky because the first thing we have to recognize here is this is per 100 grams of H2O. So we have per 200 grams here. So the first thing we can do is just use the graph to figure out how much could we put into 100 grams of water. So at 50 degrees Celsius, we go to the NH4Cl line. So NH4Cl up here. So we go to 50 degrees Celsius, go up to this line, and we hit about here. So we could say this is maybe about 52 grams. So we have 52 grams of NH4Cl per 100 grams of water. So we want to know per 200 grams of water. So you can kind of see here, well, if it's 52 grams per 100, we could just kind of multiply this by 2, and that would give us 104 for the amount that we could dissolve into 200 grams. So for those of you who are mathematically inclined, the, the real easy way to do this and the fail-safe way to do this is to just set up a proportion. So we have 52 grams per 100 grams of water. So how much could we dissolve in grams per 200 grams of water? So from here, we would just cross multiply. Right? We get 100x equals 104 zero zero we divide by a hundred on both sides we get x equals 104 so we get the same answer doing it this way so whether you can just kind of see well how do I get from 100 to 200 I multiply by 2 or you can cross multiply either way the answer is going to be 104 grams here so you just have to be very careful with the units on this graph being per 100 grams of water uh, and make sure that if they ask you for a different amount of, of solvent that you account for that with this with this multiplication factor. So again, we're just kind of using the lines here to see what the saturation points are, what, what the saturation point is at the given temperature, and then basing our answer off of that. All right, so which compound is the least soluble in water at 60 degrees Celsius? So we got all these on the list here. Uh, we go to 60 degrees Celsius, and we see, okay, we got KClO3. That's right here, so that dissolves not too well at 60 degrees Celsius. So then we go up to NaCl, which is this next line here. So that dissolves a little better. So we can take out KClO3 because we already know that NaCl dissolves better. We can then go up to NH4Cl. Well, okay, that dissolves even better at 60 degrees Celsius. So this is kind of the leader in the clubhouse. KNO3, though, is this here. I'm sorry, I've been doing this backwards the whole time. It says what is least soluble in water at 60 degrees Celsius. So the least soluble would actually be KClO3 because that was the lowest line at 60 degrees Celsius. So NaCl, NH4Cl, and KNO3, which is this line that kind of continues up here, but you can't see it. So these are all higher at 60 degrees. I mean, let's say this continues up here. These three are all higher at 60 degrees Celsius than KClO3, which is pretty much by far the lowest of, the, of this group. So KClO3 would be the least soluble in water at 60 degrees Celsius. So how I originally started this problem, if it said which compound is the most soluble, that's what you would do. We would say KNO3 because it's way up here. But since it says which is the least soluble in water at 60 degrees Celsius, we basically see which one is the lowest on this y-axis at 60 degrees Celsius. All right, so last one here. Which, which compound becomes less soluble in water as we increase the temperature? So we can kind of look at this and say, okay, HCl, well, that decreases as we increase the temperature. So right off the bat, HCl is the right, out, right answer. But we can look at the rest of these and see, okay, KCl, well, KCl kind of, KCl increases as we increase the temperature. NaCl as well, it just ever so slightly increases here, or you could even kind of make a case for it remains constant, but it, it increases ever so slightly here, but it definitely doesn't decrease. So NH4Cl as well goes up as we go from left to right here, increasing the temperature. So the only one of this group that has a negative slope that becomes less soluble as we increase the temperature here is HCl. 
So these solubility curves, uh, basically all we have to know to interpret these are that the lines represent the saturation point. That's again how much we can dissolve into the substance uh, at a given temperature. And then below the line would be unsaturated, above the line would be saturated, and then we just have to kind of identify the different substances here so we can compare them if we need to. Alright, I hope this lesson on solubility was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.